everyone! In this video, I'll go over everything that has to do with editing your text in Template. So the first thing about Template is that all graphics and text boxes are movable. You can adjust the size of them by clicking on the object and scaling with the four corners you see from the blue box that pops up. You can stretch the object and rotate it. To undo or redo, click the curved arrows from the toolbar above. To put the text into editing mode, double click on the text box, select all and start typing. You can adjust the size of your text here or by scaling the text box itself. Depending on the look you're going for, you may want to adjust the spacing between the letters and the lines of the text. To do this, navigate to the top toolbar and look for these icons and adjust accordingly. In order to make the text lowercase or if you need to put it in all caps, you can do so using the text case feature here. To change the color of the font, click the color box and select the colors you see here or choose from advanced options. You can always add a new text box from the text panel on the left and it will populate a new one with the default formatting. But if you want to keep the same formatting as a text in your design, an easier way would be to duplicate the text box here. To delete any elements from the design, select and click on the trash icon above. If you're wanting all of the text on one side, you can change that with the alignment tool, centered, left justified, or right justified. If you want your font to be bolder or look thicker, you can add the bold feature here. But if you want it to look even bolder than this allows, then you can do so by adding a stroke to your text. To add a stroke, select the text box and then the color box from the toolbar above. A panel should pop up to the right of your screen. Then click on the stroke tab. Switch the stroke button to on and drag the slider to select the correct thickness for your stroke. If you want to change your font, you can do so by selecting the text box and clicking on the font options from the toolbar above. If you're choosing from a script font, there are some that allow you the option to add swashes and loops to your letters to make it look a little extra fancy. Keep in mind that not all script fonts have this feature. So to find out if your chosen font does have these swashes built in, you're going to want to take a look at the contents of the font. To do this, select your text box and click on the cursive G icon from the toolbar above. This is the glyphs panel. Here I can see that this font does include swash characters. So I'll go ahead and go back to my text and select the letter I want to replace with the swash. Now I'll head back to the glyphs panel and select that swash. And I'll just repeat the process for this letter. With script fonts in particular, a good rule of thumb is to make sure the letter spacing is set to zero so that you don't have weird gaps or overlaps in your letters, like this. Now let's say you find yourself in a situation where your text lays behind your clip art and you want to bring it to the front. You can do this by changing the order of your elements in the layers panel on the left, which will be the little sandwich icon you see here. Now here you can see the order of the elements starting with what lays on the top to what lays on the bottom. I'll drag my text to be the top layer, and now as you can see my graphic lays behind the text. You can also do this with the tools from your top toolbar, the bring forward or send behind. And quickly, two other tools you can use are the arch text tool, which allows you to set your text on a curve as well as the opacity tool, which allows you to set how transparent you want your element to be. I hope this video was helpful and happy editing.